tending to the small green patch in the middle of a sprawling concrete jungle in Mumbai's Bandra neighborhood is environmental lawyer Shefali Alvarez. Six, seven, eight are there. Along with her fellow volunteers, she is hard at work preparing the soil to plant tomatoes, chilies, groundnut and Malabar spinach saplings. Oh, oh like a hermit crab. For over a year now, this group of environmentally conscious citizens have been striving to grow a food forest in the school on Hill Road. A food forest is essentially a forest ecosystem grown in small patches of land by merging techniques of regenerative agroforestry and waste management. There are worms on the, uh, see you know, we all feel our winters getting warmer than what they were the last year. And we say this every time, this has been the hottest winter. But every year seems to outdo the previous one. So there's definitely a change. I've seen a change over the past uh, maybe ten, eight to ten years. We need to compensate for the amount of concretization that is happening. So we want better weather, we want cleaner everything, you know, that can't happen automatically by itself and it can't automatically happen when, especially when a lot of the sea and a lot of, uh, you know, open spaces and what used to be, you know, green cover is being taken away. India's financial capital has seen a consistent rise in temperature since 2007. Research shows that residential pockets like Mulund and Borivali that have more green cover tend to be almost 5 degrees cooler than parts of Mumbai that house the airport, malls and industrial estates. Between 1991 and 2018, the city lost 40% of its green cover and approximately 30% of its water bodies, while it witnessed a 66% increase in built-up area. I definitely think that a food forest is an effective solution for the city because it's, uh, you know, creating an ecosystem by itself and adding, you know, adding a lot of value to the green cover. It's going to benefit a lot of um, birds and people so, and hence livelihood depending on them. So we started, uh, you know, this, the process of adding in the organic matter, the mulch and all of that since May. That is at the onset of the monsoons and then came the monsoons, so the breakdown happened. Everything has, is from, you know, from this area, so the leaf, all of that is from the same ecosystem as well. So, um, Shefali turned zero waste owing to recommendations of composting at home in November 2020. The recommendations came from George Remedius, founder of Turning Tide, a non-profit that started the Food Forest Initiative with the aim to address the issue of fast depleting tree cover in cities and all the ancillary problems that come with it. My mom's always suffered from asthma for as long as I can remember. So watching her suffer with a failing air quality in Bombay really didn't sit well with me. So trees was something that, you know, I was attracted to as a solution to try and fight back the failing air quality and I decided on the food forest concept mainly because a food forest is based around a natural living ecosystem. Although it takes a few years to establish, we regenerate the soil, we regenerate the landscape and we build in layers. Since 2016, Turning Tide has helped plan and grow over 12 food forests in and around Mumbai and over 5 in Pune, each in various stages of development and actively managed by a tenacious group of about 60 volunteers. Rajalakshmi Dharmarajan, a volunteer and a resident, of the Tapovan Housing Society in suburban Mumbai's Santa Cruz loves gardening. Today she supplies homegrown saplings like peanuts, tomatoes and chilli that are eventually propagated in food forests across the city. This is a tomato. It has grown so big. It's already flowering. The fruit starts at the base of the flower. 
As she was looking for ways to grow fruiting trees, she came upon George's venture, through which she now supplies saplings from her garden produce. I read about uh, George's article in newspaper. Being a librarian, I am very fond of reading newspapers. So I came across this article and I contacted him. Little did I know that he, like, he is doing many more things, like not just planting trees, he is actually growing sustainable food for forest, which is going to give a living and lot of food for lot of many people. So I wanted to be a small part of this big movement. And this is grounded. See, the flowers have come. This is chili. This is uh, surti papri, like you. There is a seed also there which you can plant. The satisfaction Rajalakshmi feels in growing these nutrient-rich food saplings is appropriately enjoyed by the beneficiaries of the food forests that George has been helping develop. Among them, the urban food forest in a housing society in Vakola is the oldest and most developed in the city. It is sustained on a plot as small as 13 feet by 145 feet. Started in 2016, the fruits from its many fruiting trees are meant exclusively for its residents. Now there the trees are pretty much established. As you may have seen, they've grown to roughly around about 20 feet tall, some of them. This is all by design because we've stacked them in a way wherein we've got tall trees, short trees, bushes and shrubs that form an entire green wall in different layers. In urban settings like Vakola, where space is limited, these forests have been built through the creative plantation technique of layering, a method that not only promises optimal utilization of space, but also mimics an existing forest in its design. So there are about eight different layers to a food forest. You start off with your tall trees, you go into shorter trees, bushes, shrubs, grass layer, herbaceous layer, there are root layers, there are creepers, and in certain places, there's even the fungal layer. And also, you know, the layer where you have water plants as well. Because we, the main idea here is to try and cover the surface of the earth with some form of root system that sees to the water infiltration and some kind of cover. So, just as society is done, we have to do all the trees and trees. It's like a tree, 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 ये सब लगा दिए हैं। इनका फायदा ऐसा मिल रहा है कि आज ये फ्रूट जैसा पेरू का झाड़ है, तो पेरू आज ये मिल रहा है। जैसा चिकू का झाड़ है, आवला का झाड़ है, नरेल का झाड़ है। बंबई में सिटी में, बंबई में सिटी में ये सब देखना आज के जो नया जनरेशन है, उनके लिए सब उसका फायदा है। More than 150 kilometers away, Govind Zamde is a farmer in the outskirts of Pune. He grows a whole host of crops that include chana, millets, corn, onions and other vegetables. But the lack of rain in the region over the last few years has made survival for these crops unpredictable. Today, in an attempt to try and secure his livelihood, Govind, with help from George, is hoping to grow a food forest along the boundary of his field in Holkalwadi Taluka. <laughs> Still in early stages of development, this forest requires comprehensive planning before saplings can be planted. We have to do the same thing. 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 जबरदस्त यह कोरोना ची लाट सालू जाली तेजा पासून ऑर्गेनिक शिती मुनु हित सालू केला ये करता अस्तानाच हिज रोज जॉर्ज साहिब अब जगड़ा आले अंतिम नी अमल आजुने एक साल लीला कि तुम्ही लेयर शिती करा ते ते लेयर शिती मजे एक जमीनी मजे खट्टा की उन तेजा खतान से पाला पाचोला ऐसे थर दे उन तेजा � the food forest we're planting for farmers is a whole different ball game. Okay, they have their crops. We choose to want to put these fruiting trees on the buns of their fields, right on the borders, 
okay and if they have common areas in villages we're looking to also have them planted in those common areas for the simple reason is that they're going to get a little bit of economic benefit from it nutrition is going to be another challenge that will be solved Rooted around this farmland are pomegranate, drumsticks and mango saplings that are known to survive arid conditions while providing shade covers for farmers. So far, George and his group of volunteers have planted roughly 1000 trees, most of which have survived because they are native to Mumbai and Pune. and well suited to the city's climate and biodiversity apart from helping replenish the city's green cover manage microclimate and eventually provide income generation food forests are also adept at managing waste in a food forest i can manage literally tons of waste we've taken over 5 tons of biomass from the surrounding areas and we've done this thing called deep mulching so mulch is basically like a cover like uh, it's like having cloth over your skin it protects the soil reduces the evaporation as it breaks down and degrades it forms compost it forms nutrient rich layers of soil and a habitat for all kinds of creepy crawlies which we consider as our best friends as they break everything down and create new layers of soil Building a food forest can cost anywhere between fifteen thousand to thirty thousand rupees, with volunteers usually crowdfunding the whole effort. For residents like Shefali, participating in grassroots green initiatives like these can remedy the overwhelming feeling of helplessness that comes with confronting large-scale environmental challenges. When you see a thriving ecosystem, when you see chirping birds, when you see fruits, when you see people benefiting from it that's all the satisfaction you need you don't need anything more I stuck with food forest or rather I got into food forest because tree plantation is what I started off with and gradually I wanted to learn how I could benefit the birds the insects the ecosystem as well as grow some of the nutrition that's required for people and who doesn't love you know growing something and plucking your own produce and eating it so for me food forest is is this perfect blend and mix of everything i love